Welcome to Cravings Control for Fat Loss. I'm your host, Laura Cavallo, former sugar binger, overeater, and yo-yo dieter turned fat loss and cravings coach for hundreds of busy women. Here at Cravings Control for Fat Loss, I'll be sharing mindset, movement, and metabolism strategies for those who are ready to ditch the fat diet cycle and slim down without counting calories, tracking points, or giving up any of the foods they love. Get ready to embrace progress over perfection, grace over guilt, and bring curiosity and learning to the inevitable ups and downs of your life. Expect a decrease in your cravings while seeing and feeling an improvement in how you look, how you feel, and your overall quality of life. I am so excited you're here, boo. Let's get started. Welcome to today's episode. I'm talking with Robin Charles, the owner of Bamblish, a period company that sells leak-proof underwear and products for periods. During today's discussion, we talk about our personal experiences as young women growing up, learning about, or rather not learning about, period health and sex. Robin shares what prompted her to start her company, and she wants women to know that switching to reusable, natural products is the way to go. Robin has been married for 12 years and has two children, Check out her company at bamblish.com as well as the attached link to a coupon so you can grab your own pair of period undies at a discounted rate. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you're a busy woman who wants to reduce cravings, hunger, and overeating by up to 70% so you can naturally eat less and sustainably lose weight, I want to invite you to my brand new six-week coaching program, The Cravings Code, which starts on Monday, May 8th. The Cravings Code is my first ever small group program that provides one-on-one high-touch coaching while connecting you with a community of other like-minded women. I will be sharing the same strategies and systems that have helped my clients consistently see a drop in weight, inches, and cravings. If you want to receive an opportunity to join, follow the link below to add your name. This will be an application-based program because I want to make sure you're ready and excited to be part of the crew. The program opens for enrollment Wednesday, May 3rd, and requires a short application to make sure you're the right fit for the program and that you're excited to be part of the crew. Click below and add your name to our email list so you can be notified when the program opens for enrollment. Those of you that are joining us, my name is Laura. You are on the Cravings Control for Fat Loss podcast, and I just hit record because me and Robin were having an amazing conversation about women's health and something that she's going through now really personally and and just how there's a lot more information out there and access and women not feeling so alone. And so I had to hit record because I was like, this is some good information. We need to get other women understanding this. But I'm here with Robin, Robin Charles. She is the owner and operator and creator of Bamblish, which is a period underwear company. And I spoken to Robin before. She's talked to some of our Laura Cavallo coach and cravings clients. But I wanted to bring her on the podcast because to her point and what we were just talking about is we need to normalize periods. We need to normalize women's health. We need to educate women. We need to empower women. And what better way than to talk about reproductive health and our bodies in a way that is not shameful and empowering. So welcome, Robin. Hi, and thank you so much for welcoming me onto your show again. Um, the last time we talked, you you had a couple of people come over and check my page out. So I, I really appreciate you guys for doing that. And um, yeah, uh, of what course. More, Laura said, like, it's, it's so important for us not to keep secrets anymore. Not not when it comes to something that can help other people, whether it has to do with reproductive health or mental health or any kind of health, it can help someone else. Like just talking about what we're going through. Sometimes you you think you're alone and there's other people that are going through the exact same thing or even have answers. You know, they're further along in their journey. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm all about it. All about yeah. the talking. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're going to put it out there today. So I want to go back to the, I want to start at the beginning, right? Like your journey with women's health and your period and and your cycle and even sexuality growing up. What was that like for you? Um, You you know, we went to high school together. The the (laughs) sex ed was non-existent from what I remember. Yeah. Fourth grade, fourth grade, I think sex ed was the first time it was introduced. Okay. I, so I remember I was a late bloomer. I I felt like all the other girls (laughs) were getting their periods before me. And I was kind of afraid of it because I didn't have any information about it. I thought it was going to hurt. I thought I I, the things I imagined, let me tell you. (laughs) And um, 
I didn't have much education about it. We sat down in that little fourth grade class and they taught us like, well, when you, you know, when you get to puberty, you know, girls are going to do this and boys, their, their bodies are going to do this. And here's some pads and here's some deodorant. And I was just like, it, to me, it was just like, well, what? Like, I wanted to know, like, well, why is this going to happen to me? I don't understand. You know, like, when is it going to happen to me? You know, some girls, they were like, well, I already have my period. And I'm like, like, what? I was like, you know, flat chested, late bloomer. Like, you know, I didn't get anything till like high school. So I, it was just such a confusing time. And just, I wish, and I, and I hope it's different now. I heard it hasn't changed much because now my daughter, my youngest daughter is nine. And she's starting to have questions and stuff. But I, I do, I think it's very important for sex ed to just not, not only be in the schools, but also in the houses. As moms, I believe, moms or parents, we should start to introduce those conversations and also not be afraid of the questions that are coming because they have some questions. Sometimes mm. it's like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to answer that. <laughs> but it's important because they're asking and, and they want to know, you know, the kids now, they're so inquisitive. They want to know everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. They're exposed to so much. There's already they're already That's learning true. so much outside of the That's home true. and in school with social media mm-hmm. that they're probably you know they're so much more advanced I feel like than that than we true. were. That is true. I was putting bread in the VCR at my daughter's age, and she is like on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. Crop top, shorts, dancing. Crop top. She knows all yeah. the dances, yeah. and I was like bread in the VCR. Yeah. And oh I my just goodness. <laughs> So tell our listeners what it was like growing up for you, maybe uh, within your household. Did your parents talk about, or your mom or your dad or, you know, whoever helped yeah. helped raise you? Like, were they talking about periods? Were they talking about sex? Was it like, <laughs> hush, hush, we don't talk about it? What What was that like? So I grew up, I'm Antiguan. So I'm from the Caribbean and Caribbeans and Hispanics are similar where you just don't talk about sex. You don't talk about any of that. Boobs? No. No, none of that stuff. Like my mom, she she really like sex was like if if you kiss a boy, you're going to get pregnant. That that was it, <laughs> you know? So like she I think it's just that's the way she was brought up and you know, looking back, I'm, you know, I can laugh, but I'm just like maybe she didn't know how to talk. Mm-hmm. Right. Us, the girls about periods and also sex and stuff like that. And, and also she didn't want us to be, I guess, teenage moms. So the best way in her mind was to put fear in us, fear of boys. But as you know, if you try to scare someone from some, <laughs> if you try to scare someone from something, they're going to be even more curious. I was actually a teenage mom. I had my first daughter at 18 because I wasn't, I feel like because I wasn't educated about it. And I was curious about it, mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. you know, it can backfire. So now with my children, I'm open. My 18 year old, my, I have an 18 year old now, believe it or not. She asked me where babies came from at two years old. So she was like, "Wow, where, yeah. where did I come from? Where did babies, she was very smart, like even young. And I had to like explain it in a way that even a two year old can understand because she had questions. And I said, and don't lie to your kids, because I did that. I tried to lie. I said, well, a mommy and daddy have to get married, and then they can have kids. But a couple of years later, she found out I did not marry her father. So she's like, well, where did I really come from? Because you did not marry my dad. <laughs> and then I had to, you know, she was four or five at that point. Right. So I can get a little bit more in detail. Yeah. But, you know, age appropriate, I think it's important for us to definitely talk about what sex is so that they're not either afraid of it. We don't scar them from, right? because that's another thing you could do. You can totally scare them. And then they don't have a healthy relationship with it when they do become of age. Mm-hmm. And then you can have the other side like me. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So it's like, yeah. you really, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. But yeah. I believe in speaking about it the best that you can, the best of your ability. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know how to 
talk about it with your kids, do some research on the best way to talk about it and to break through some of that. Yeah. YouTube videos for everything, (laughs) right? See, I had a, I had a different upbringing and I think it's because my grandparents were so strict with my mom that they didn't talk about anything. They didn't talk about sex or they didn't talk about anything. They didn't talk about feelings, they didn't talk about anything that was hard, right? <laughs> and so, you know, it's that generation, right? You just put your head down, you work, you you marry, you have kids, you do the thing. Like you have the path. Okay. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. You just do it for some families, right? Maybe not everyone. So my mom was very open with me from an early age about, you know, if we saw maybe like if there was a movie and people were kissing or babies were made, you know, and I would ask questions, she would open up and share. And so, so I had sex education very early on and my mom was like, you know, as soon as I had my first boyfriend, she's like, you're going on birth control. We're making sure you're protected, you know, making sure you're using condoms and STDs. I got, I got the whole gamut. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was really helpful because I was kind of a crazy teenager. I was looking for male male attention, right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. So Mm -hmm. it was definitely helpful to have that open, honest communication with, with my mom. But yeah, periods. I mean, I remember getting my first period. I think I was in eighth grade. And same, some of my friends had already gotten it. And I was like, Mm -hmm. why aren't I getting it? You know? And my friends were like shaving their legs and shaving their armpits. And my mom wouldn't let me shave because I had like literally no hair. I didn't have any – like I had like like four hairs in my armpit. She's like, I can count how many (laughs) armpit hairs you have. And I'm like, I still want to shave. So I shaved one day when she wasn't home and I like cut my leg and she was really mad. But so eighth grade and I had all the cramps and everything. And my mom set me up and everything like that with tampons and pads and all that. But – In terms of like reproductive information, I was put on this pill, but I could only get pregnant technically five days out of the month, right? Technically. Mm -hmm. And so that's that started my long journey of like 10, 15 years on birth control. Mm -hmm. So after you had your daughter and what was like your relationship with your body and your period health through your late teens and 20s and and how did it change Mm -hmm. after having a a child and what got you into getting passionate about period health and yeah. and women's health. So backtracking before I had my daughter, every time I, I got my period, um, finally, almost in 10th grade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was the summer, thankfully. So I was, you know, summer I was home. So no embarrassing first uh, story, you know, in school type of thing. I was home and I got it. And that was it. I told my mom, I think I got my period. And she just gave me some pads and that was it. Didn't even know how to put it on. Just figured it out. You know, like my mom was just like that, you know, but within a couple of months, once it started coming like, right. Cause I think when you start your period, sometimes it doesn't come regular, like you'll right. get it. And then like maybe two months later it will come. And then three months later until it like finally regulates itself. So I was about 15 and um, I started like, breaking out in rashes. So where other girls were like cramping and having headaches and some had to call out of school and stay home. I was, I had no pain, but I had rashes. Like, wow. Like rashing from the front all the way back to my tailbone. Oh my goodness. And that's because I was allergic to the pads. I was allergic (gasps) to, yeah, the product itself. And we tried different brands and back then you know obviously nobody was like as I don't think there was a big community for like being health conscious and environmentally safe and cotton and like core like uh, there's brands that exist now that are like no chemicals they're cotton they're natural organic yeah that didn't really exist back then not that I could go to the store and like pick it up off the shelf it didn't exist you know so I had to just make do my whole high school life, like every time I got my period, it was like, it was drama, like rashing, you know, I almost would have wished to have the cramps. Like that's how bad. Yes. Wow. I remember mentally for me, the first thought of like vaginal health was when that lawsuit came out against Johnson and Johnson for baby powder causing cervical cancer or yeah, cervical cancer that I think that was really 
I don't know for certain, but I remember after that, all of these companies coming out and talking about organic, yes. l- low toxic products. It was like a switch. Like yes. something switched in the, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So sorry to interrupt you, but I, no, like you saying okay. that was like, yeah, I don't remember that either until all these women were having these like cervical cancer. And nobody was talking about even rashing. Like I would kind of like try to bring it up with friends, like, and it just, it wasn't a thing. No one else was kind of, not that I know of, was having the same reaction as me. I was just maybe sensitive. But I would also get sensitive with toilet paper and just anything in that area. Wow. So it's like, wow. I was just, I'm just like sensitive. like <laughs> Yeah, then, sensitive know? skin. Yeah. So once I had my daughter at 18, I got pregnant at 18. And then a month from 19, I had her. And yeah, she changed my entire life. But I still don't really know how I got her. <laughs> if you know what I mean, like... You were like, you know, what did I do? I was, like, I was just like, okay, like... <laughs> I, I, her father's actually... He went to school with us and graduated with us too. <laughs> okay, okay. But, like, I was just like, you know, like, we did this, you know? And then, okay, I took a test. The test was positive. Then a baby's here. And I don't really know what exactly happened wow. to cause her. Like, it was just like... Okay, I know there's egg and there's sperm, but how exactly did all this happen? When did this happen? Like, you just don't know. I didn't didn't know anything about ovulation. I didn't know anything about the four phases of the menstrual. Nothing. Nothing. Just like, okay, I got a baby. Wow. I have a baby now. So, you know, did it happen again? Yes, it did. (laughs) Yes, it did. I chose, you know, thank God for the rights that we women have, whether to have a child or not. I chose not to have time anything happened again after that. But I don't think I really understood babies until I was 30. Wow. (laughs) And I had two. I have two before 30. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, after her, like, you know, I really still didn't understand my body. I was on birth control. My body didn't really like the birth control. So I got off and then I got on the patch and the patch was mm. like, there was a lawsuit with the patch. That the actually, depo? Yeah, the, the patch. There was oh, actually- Oh, the depo a was a shot. The, the shot. depo yeah. was a shot. Yeah. I never did the depo, um, but I did the patch. I did the pill. My favorite was the ring. Yes. Because same. for me, I just, I loved it. I just like put it in to get no, no thinking about it. There's, you know, not much, I didn't have much reaction with my body with it until pretty much I started doing that until I met my husband, not my now husband. So, and I met him at like, what, what was I? 20, 24. <laughs> so yeah. So from 18 to 24, just trying to figure out like, how can I just not get pregnant? Don't wow. really understand pregnancy or how it works but how can I not have you know so that's that was my relationship with it like sex itself you know before I met my husband like I was just like I like it so I'm gonna do it yeah every time I get we should should like it you should (laughs) so yeah I had a lot of boyfriends yeah I just I I love it but I don't want a baby but you also didn't know like yeah. the steps and and what was going on it did was like Russian roulette it was like yeah. let's just <laughs> fingers crossed right yeah. fingers crossed no wow and so during that time period did you do you remember any conversations with your mom do you remember doing any research do you remember even knowing that you had a choice in the sense of can I research this should I know more information or was it no. were you still living in maybe that was there shame associated yeah. with it or guilt or was it just like, or just like, I have no clue. Yeah. I was just kind of just like that. I was like, no clue. Back then it was libraries. There was no, right. the that was not how it is now. You know, yeah. YouTube just became a thing like what, 2009, 2008. I think YouTube was just like in the baby phases. Right. It wasn't even like how it is now where you can literally, you have a plethora of information at your fingertips. So I didn't even, I don't think I was, I wasn't even the same person back then. Like now, if you say something to me and I don't know what it is, I'm like getting on my phone in that same second. And I'm like, dictionary, Google, (laughs) what does this mean? And, you know, looking it up three times, like just to make sure I'm I'm understanding like what it is. But back then it was just like, you just tell me something. I was like, all right, 
you know? Yeah. Just so take I didn't it for have the value. research. I didn't have that research mindset. I was just kind of like, okay, well, this happened. So, okay, what's my next step? Like, you know, right. just kind of like cause and effect or reaction. Like, yeah. Okay. Just very reactive, you know, mm-hmm. to whatever was going on. So, so you got to 30. You had yeah. two, two kids. You were still yeah. like, okay, don't know the exact steps or the ins and outs, yeah. the four phases, the ovulation. So what yeah. was the catalyst for that change for you? I think around 30, like, I don't know, maybe something happens to us around 30. I don't know. We start to grow up a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. A little yeah, bit. A little bit. We start to like change and become like, I guess, who we are now. So I, I was more into researching. I was more into like, okay, I know I want to start a business. I don't know what business is going to be. So that's how my researching, like mine started to come in. Like, what can I do? But I want it to be something that I love and I want it to be something that I enjoy and I want it to serve. And so I really didn't know. I didn't have any answers at that point at 30, but I knew that this is what I wanted. So just like dabbled in this and that, freelanced here, freelanced there, sold some soap, you know, made some jewelry, did some nails, did some hair, like, you know, just a little of everything to see, like, what is it that I want to do? And what is it that I'm passionate? Those things are fun, but I just, they weren't, they weren't it. Like, I just knew they weren't it for me. And then right before the pandemic, it was 2019. So at this point, I don't even know how old I am then, but (laughs) I think I'm like 34. So like four years later. Yeah. Yeah. About 2019, the end of 2019, that's when like I realized I have an issue with leaks. But going back, like I, you know, going back and I'm I'm like jumping all over my timeline, but I had the issue with the rashes with the pads when I turned right. after I had my daughter, my my uh 18-year-old, the first one, I found the Diva Cup. So that was like one of the first menstrual cup that went mainstream. Wow. That's a long time ago. I was using a Diva Cup before Diva Cup was even like a thing. And I remember telling people, yeah, I, and it was like a lifesaver for my periods. Like the Diva Cup, like it's just something internal. So it's a menstrual cup. It goes inside. There's nothing touching me. There's literally nothing touching me, nothing to rash up. I would have my period. Now I have no pain. Cause I never had that issue. I never had cramps or headaches or anything like that. And now I have no rashes. So like, it's literally like, am I even on my period? I don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was just bliss. Like the diva cup, like literally gave my life back, but it didn't hit me that that's something that I could have m- manufactured and did myself until mm-hmm. pandemic time. So right. once the, you know, 2019 came, I started having issues. Cause I think internally just getting older I was using the same Diva Cup for all those years at this point because you can use them for 10 years. So I saved money. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you just boil it. You clean it every, you know, you wash it every month and there you go. And I literally used the same Diva Cup for almost 10 years. Like it was literally almost 10 years. So after that whole situation, I don't know if like the Diva Cup was morphing or my vaginal canals, like, Mm -hmm. you know, after having two kids, like, you know, started to warp and do weird things. It's changing. The body's changing. The body's changing. The hips are growing, you know, the thighs, everything. (laughs) So I, I realized my cup is like literally leaking. Like either I'm leaking, my cup is leaking. I need to go up a different size. Something's going on because I had like my first, one of my first public leaks, I think it was around October or November in 2019. And I was literally in a public place and like everybody could see my butt <laughs> with this blood on it. Oh, and it was a no. little bit, it was a little spot. It was a yeah. lot. Oh, it no. was a lot. And thank God I was like with friends. So like they just <laughs> cover my butt up, you know, and I'm just they like, helped you out. how is this happening? Like, I don't understand. Like I'm literally 30 something years old why am I having this issue I'm not like teenager right in high school or like a middle school or a little kid mm-hmm. I shouldn't I shouldn't be having problems with leaks and I'm like okay it never happened before let's just go with it so the next month it happened again it happened again <laughs> and 
I was just like, are you serious? Like, why is this? I don't get it. Like, what am I doing wrong? I've been using the cup for so long. There's no reason why it should be giving me this problem. That's when I started researching what can I do to also work together with my menstrual cup but not be pads because I can't go back. (laughs) I can't Mm -hmm. go back to pads. Mm -hmm. I saw reusable pads, which I was just like, "Mm, I'm not sure about those. But the underwears, I don't know, for some reason, I was like, let me just try. So I actually bought from a woman on Amazon and I fell in love, like to the point where I was literally sending so many people over to her link I should have been an affiliate. I should yeah. be a mission. I mean, like the numbers were going up and I'm just like, I'm sending people to this link. Like I should make my own link. Like I should do find a way to um, manufacture these, get these made or even like I sew, I can make them myself, Yeah, you know, if possible. So that's how the business started to develop. And then March came the next year where the whole world shut down. The pandemonium Mm -hmm. broke out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And then it was like literally divine timing because pads were running out on shelves. Things were happening. And even though I wasn't ready, this one lady, she reached out to me and she's like, I will buy these from you today. Like, you need to sell. And I was like, I literally have two styles. She's like, I don't care. (laughs) I'll buy them. (laughs) So I was just like, all right, I'll make something by tonight. And that's that's how it, yeah, it just like got pushed into it because I wasn't going to start till September of 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because of the pandemic, I was able to start. And I'm glad I did because literally I did my best sales during the pandemic. Yeah. (laughs) It's crazy. There was a need. There was a need for them. Yeah. And it seems like the underwear solved not just one problem of the leaks, but it also, the all natural component is good for sensitive skin. I hadn't even gotten into that part. I was just, my, my focus was like, What's going to stop my leaks? Yes. Mind you, I never had another leak after that, whether I was wearing the underwears or not. Right. I was like, literally, it just happened so I can start the business. Yes, pretty much. (laughs) It was divine intervention. Yeah. But also diving me into this world of periods now, it literally, it's like so much bigger than leaks. It's like, I started like with this mindset, like leaks. And now it's like leaks, natural environment women's rights <laughs> yeah just like yeah women's health like I'm just like wow like I I never expected to like open up this can of worms that's like I didn't know all of this stuff was going on so I'm so grateful like I'm gonna be in this like I'm gonna mm-hmm. be in the period world forever yep. like <laughs> yeah stay we want you in it yeah So how are your period underwear constructed? How, what makes them so leak proof? Yeah. So basically period underwears are made with my specific period underwears are just made with layers. I have four layers in them. Top layer is cotton. That's the one that's going to touch your body. You want that to be some kind of natural, natural fabrics, cotton, um, natural fibers, bamboo, that kind of stuff. Underneath, now you have the wickening stuff, the things that's going to pull the liquids and hold it there and keep you dry. And under that layer is the leak-proof lining. Mine is like a form, a, like a nylon material. Okay. So some people use plastics in there, which it doesn't make sense because you got to throw these underwears out sometimes. And you also want to make sure that when you do dispose of them, that they do break down. So you want it to be something that's going to break down over time, you know, not something that's going to just sit in a landfill. Now there's talk about Thinks and uh, these other brands that are getting sued by women because they have these things called PFAS, like PFAS. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Mm -mm. They're basically something that's called forever chemicals. Oh, And the thing is about those is that they are found in everything. They're even in our body. They exist in our body as we speak because we've been consuming things for our whole lives. So they, they live in our, and everywhere and the bottles and everything we eat from anything we put in our mouth, anything we breathe. But these underwears that are being sued, they have high levels 
of these forever chemicals, which are very dangerous because they affect our reproductive health. So I would suggest that when people are looking for a period underwear or any kind of any kind of feminine products that's going to be on your body, that you really research that if they've been tested for these forever chemicals. Currently, I took a little break because I wanted to send my materials away so that they could be tested. And thankfully, you know, they came back there. They have no chemicals in them. And that's because I don't have any tech. Yeah, I don't have any tech in my underwear. Like things, they have this tech. And some of the bigger brands, they have the money so they could put the tech, which silvers and things to help with smell and stuff like that. I don't have tech. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't have tech. It's just the layers. It's just like, if you smell something crazy, go to the doctor. You're not supposed to smell anything crazy. Right. (laughs) You know, but yeah. So that's something to keep in mind when you're shopping around for different brands of period underwear. But thankfully, Bamblish is chemical free. I can say that and be proud. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that is that on your website? It needs yeah. to be. It needs to be. It's going. Yeah, good, going. good. Just yeah, I just <laughs> good. That's amazing. I I just uh, googled PFAS. I I was not yeah. aware of them, and yeah, so I'm gonna they're do a little literally up on everywhere. That. They're like in bottles and low low amounts of them. It's like again, we wouldn't never never knew about this unless someone actually spoke out about it. Yeah, you know, I didn't that's know true. about it. I'm like, what? I was like. And they're going after period underwears. Okay, let me yeah. go check this out because I want to make sure not just not just check it out, but I want to make sure that I'm selling something healthy. I want people to be healthy. Like we've already lived in a world that's full of chemicals and full of all this stuff. Like we don't need that stuff extra. Like we're trying to move forward. Like not right, you know, backwards. Especially so. by our our area, you know. Oh my gosh, especially especially. So how can women use period underwear? Is it, do you, can you wear it with a tampon or a diva cup? Can you, do you have to change it very yeah. often? Can you wear them to bed? Tell us a little yeah. bit about the usage of period underwear. So it definitely depends on your flow. I've been lucky because I have a very light flow. Maybe that has something to do with why I don't get cramps and stuff, but I have a very, very light flow. So I actually can wear the underwears all day and not just like a regular day and just like changing when I get home um, by itself. But I do know some of my customers, they use it as a backup. So okay. some will use it with a cup and then they'll use it, you know, they'll put the underwear as like kind of like a backup. They'll use it with their tampons, use it as a backup for leaks. They are comfortable. They feel, I mean, I wear it on regular days. Like even sometimes like I'm not on my period, but maybe things are coming out. I don't know. Right, yeah. right. Maybe I'll just really, yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, obviously it catches any kind of like moistness. So I think that every single period having person, they should have a little area in their lingerie drawer just for period underwear, because you have them already. You have your underwear already that you're like, these are from a period, but mm-hmm. they don't have the, they don't have like the observancy. So why not just have functional like underwear that are already, they're literally cute but they're for your period and they have absorption to protect you just in case. Overnight is the best way that I say for someone to try it. Mm -hmm. Try it overnight. Try it by itself. Save your pads and your tampons for the daytime and wear the period underwear like at home, safety of your bed. You know, sometimes you always wake up, there's a little spot. You're not going to have that with the period underwear Mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, You're going to be secure and breathe because sometimes you don't want pads and stuff yeah, you just like all the time. <laughs> Let uh, me breathe. Like I you know. know. Yeah, but the underwears they're very like comfortable. They just feel like you're wearing regular un- underwear. Yeah, yeah. That's how I use my. It does take a learning though, because like all those years we've been using these other products, so it's like when you put on the underwear, you almost feel like, oh my god. I know. Like, run right into the bathroom every two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> You feel a little naked, a little yeah, naked, even naked. though you're not naked. Yeah. Like, once you trust them, you're just like, whatever. Like They're amazing. I, I, I use mine for bed, for sleep, because I hate having tampons you feel like a diaper. all the time. Like, yeah. Stuff you like, you know, even with the menstrual cup, sometimes you just don't want something inside of you. You just want to be free, you know, yes. even on your period. So yeah, the period on the words are definitely good for that. And going back to the, to the, menstrual cups it's interesting i don't know if my vagina is shaped a certain way but i have such a hard time getting it out that i have 
almost un- been unable to get it out in the, the the two times I've used the the menstrual cups. I don't know if like my pubic bone is like really far forward. I can't yeah. get my hands at the base to pinch it yeah. and pull it out. And then when I do, it suctions against my it's cervix. It's got a good suction on it. Yeah. yeah. So it it's it's not super functional for me. I tried it. Yeah. I was actually going to bring it to my gyno and say like, hey, is my vagina shaped weird? Because <laughs> Because I can't get this menstrual cup out. I've like literally been in the squat position for like yeah. 40 minutes, like pushing. Yeah. Like, And my friend's like, I don't think it's supposed to be that hard. So no. I, yeah, okay. you okay. probably either have one that's definitely the wrong shape. Now they have the tilted ones. Oh, so they interesting. have a tilted one. They, it's like kind of like a little leaned rather than a cup like this. It's wow. kind of like it okay. leans to the side. So you can try that. You can try one with a longer stem. Yeah. If you pull on the stem, you're causing a plunger effect. You're going to be <laughs> you're sucking like <laughs> I've done that. It's not comfortable. <laughs> no, it's not. And um actually <laughs> this menstrual cups are so funny. And the thing is with menstrual cup is the more tense you get, the more your vagina is like <laughs> I'm keeping clenches up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So you really just, you really have to be just like really relaxed when you take it out. I mean, now I've been, (laughs) I've been using it for like, you know, 15 years. So like I literally, I can just do it in two seconds. Right. But that first go around that first year, it, (laughs) it was difficult because I had many times where, you know, I would have that happen where it would plunge, but Sometimes it does take a learning curve. Not everybody's shaped the same. Some yeah. people are bigger, so they need a bigger menstrual cup. Your menstrual cup might be too big for you. You might need mm-hmm. a mini. Mm-hmm. You know, you might need a mini one. And sometimes the muscles are just they're just so strong. So yeah. it's just a learning curve thing. I would switch it out though. I think so. And even like I know it's weird, but like maybe measure. I guess measure with your finger. Like I think on my Instagram, I have something where you can actually measure how high your cervix is. Your cervix is actually actually always moving up and down all throughout the month. It's like going up and down. So like at one time, the cervix might be high, but actually during your period, the cervix comes down. It comes closer so that you know all this stuff can come out. So the shape changes even day to day. And sometimes, wow. sometimes your vagina is just like, not today. Yeah. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> she's That's just, so... you know, she has a mind of her own. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Today, I don't want anything. Yeah. So... I think in general, I'd prefer to stick to the period underwear anyway, because yeah. I like that it's just free flowing, you yeah. know, and not something, you know, yeah. Diva Cup's different than a, a tampon because tampons you like don't, actually in there. You don't but... feel the flow. You... Yeah. It's good for swimming. And like, if you're going on vacation... I love the menstrual cup. I love it. Another thing that you can try is a disc. Mm, I've never um, tried those. Yeah. That's something else you can try. Um, if the cup is not working for you, the disc, I wish I had mine right now, but I have a very soft disc that I use. Those are like made for like period sex. If you're into that. But sometimes they're very like comfortable. They're more comfortable sometimes than um, a period cup. So that's something you can look into. They're very soft. They're like and that catches the blood as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you just look up period disc, okay. Um, some Flex has it in like a disposable type of thing, but they do have the reusable one, and it's so soft. It's like literally soft. You put it in. It sits a different way in the vagina, but. The way you take it out, I believe, is just by tilting. But it is it is a little, you know, a little bit messy. more messier yeah. if you don't know what you're doing. Some women right. can just get in there and take it out real good. But like I said, it's everything is a learning curve with that kind of stuff. Okay, something to look into. So at Bamblish, do you have period underwear for different flows or is it – for one type of underwear with all four layers Mm -hmm. and then you just kind of switch out based on Mm -hmm. how heavy your flow is so most of the underwears have the four layers in it i do have a style called emma and emma is three layers so that one's for like lighter days it's also a very like ultra fine soft underwear it's so silky soft so for that i would say if someone has a light flow go with emma 
Okay. That was really nice. And then the other styles are usually four layers because usually it's it's heavy. People who are heavy want to try to see if it's it will, if it will work for them. Yeah. And I love how cute these look. I mean, when I first was getting into period underwear, they yeah. were just like black and that's it. Yeah, these, yeah. We've got some leopard pin. We've got yeah, pink. Yeah. We've got we've They've got come red. a long way and I'm sure they're going to evolve now that they have thongs and stuff. And I'm just like, if I have a period, I'm not, I'm not wearing a thong. But some yeah. people like it. Some yeah. people like it. And they've been asking for me. So I'm actually looking for a good style so that I can also start you know, supplying my customers that are asking for the the thongs. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So for our new shoppers to Bamblish, what's like a good first underwear to start with? Can you kind of walk us through some of your different styles and what you have? I'm, I know like yeah. the, the Hannah and the Hannah is really cute. The Hannah's number one. That's like so the very color. cute. Everyone wants the Hannah's. So I would say Hannah, since that's the best seller, for some reason people just like the the mesh. The Hannah's the, the only one that I have husbands in my DMs about their wife <laughs> underwear. So I'm like, there's something about Hannah. I don't know. <laughs> there was one husband oh my he God. was like, my wife looks so good. I was like, all right then. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm using this as a, this is part of a testimonial yes, on the website. Yes. And then I would say, like, if you have a younger child, um, like just starting out, I had a mom. I love to talk about her. She was she was my old boss. Um, she was just like when she found out that I had like a business of a period underwear, she had like so much questions because she's like, my daughter just got her period. She's 12. She doesn't want to talk to me about her period. And I'm like, well, you could try to like, you know, sneak it in there. I don't know. Sneak it in there somehow. And then she's like, no, she she doesn't want to talk about it with me. So I'm like, try to buy her the Sadie's. And on my website, you can see Sadie. It's like the teal color one, the bluish and the teal. Mm-hmm. I was like, buy her the Sadie's and just like put it on her bed. Just be like, I got you something. Because <laughs> the way she would find out that her daughter got her period was she would find laundry. And she's like, like you could have told me, like instead of hiding the laundry, right? You know, right. but she did. She was embarrassed. She didn't want to talk to her mom. So then she bought her the Sadie's, and then she put it. You know, whatever she she did, what I told her to do, and then she said, you know, a couple weeks later, her daughter comes around like the like the door, and she's like, uh-huh. <laughs> and she's like, I like those underwears that you buy. Can you buy me one more? Yay. So then she ended up buying her like a couple more like color, like different colors, like Lula and stuff like that. So it opened up the conversation for her mom and her. So period on the word, it's, it's like one of those things that like you can use it as a tool to even talk to your kids. You can buy it for them before they get their periods. I mean, it, and it could be for us too, us yeah. older ones, you know? So I love that that you bring that up about having it be a conversation tool or a tool for to open up conversation around it and helping young girls be more prepared and more confident in their body and not feel ashamed, right? Especially mm-hmm. like if they get leaks or if they get it at school, right? Or if they mm-hmm. have to go to practice and they don't have tampons or something. And I also noticed that you have the, I love what this is called, the blossom box. Oh, That's yeah. so cute. So this is also for first period kit and what's in that so in the blossom box it's two underwears it's like little self-care things so there's a little book in there that they could just take notes a cute little pen a little rainbow soap like bubble bomb soap that when they put in the bathtub it makes rainbow colors so just things that little girls would like i think there's stickers in there and then there's also a pamphlet in there and the pamphlet is something i worked on And basically it explains about periods. It literally, that's what you can use to talk to your child about periods. It has in the pamphlet, it has, what is a period? How often can I expect this? Will it hurt? Like just the frequently asked questions. I actually made the pamphlet with my 18 year old daughter because she wanted to get involved and just say like, this is what kids want to know right off the bat. And then on the back of it, I have, these are the adults that I feel like I can trust to speak. So it has like a little line and you can like fill it out. Mom, dad, auntie, grandma, 
all these people. And then you could either bring the pamphlet to them. Like it just gives the child a chance to open up and just like, let's talk about this. You wow. can bring the pamphlet and be like, oh, I read here that this, and you know, then you know your child is interested in this topic and you can maybe get some books for them and get some more products and talk to them. And, you know, it just opens up the, the conversation. And that's what I want. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Do you talk about sex at all in that little pamphlet? Not in the pamphlet. <laughs> moms. <Okay. Ew. laughs> yeah. You know, moms in it. Mom's on the internet. No one's gonna. <laughs> right, right. Maybe it's like you can do like a resources yeah. for moms I would or something love, on the back. Love, I would absolutely love to like maybe later on incorporate that, but it definitely is gonna take some tact and some wisdom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> know how yeah. to do it right. Yeah, yeah. Like in terms of se- as a sex educator mm-hmm. for parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole other ball game. <laughs> yeah. So what's the the best part about A, running your own business and, and B, being able to help so many women, like just being in touch with all these women the last three years, like what's been the most rewarding oh part? God. The stories that are coming out in the last couple of years have been like so amazing. And the community that's forming, you don't even mean to form a community when you start a business, but you just end up doing it anyway. Like you form the community and they just become like customer friends, like people who are like always coming to you, asking questions and you, you know, these people and you're, you know, about their families and they're telling you about, I don't know. It's just the community for me is, is like the best part of the business. And also just my awareness now on how the body works. And I feel so like just empowered, like to know friends still come and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I have cramps and da 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 And I'm just like, well, what kind of products do you use? And now, like, I mm-hmm. put on my, like, mm-hmm. you know, what kind of products do you use? And, like, uh, you know, are you are you still using Always? Are you still using these brands in the store? Like, you have to switch to organic. Like, you know? So, like, just that part of it and really wanting to just help people heal. And also the good stories that come out. Like, for example, I had one friend that she just was totally against the menstrual cup. Like she was kind of like, no, I do not want to touch myself. And I'm like, girl, you be touching yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't, I don't think you don't. Okay. When it comes to a menstrual cup, you don't want to touch yourself. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> so then she left, you know, but then she tried it. And then she, she just said, the first time she, tried, she fell in love with it. And I'm just like, what would have happened if you would have just been like, I want to touch myself. Like, yeah. come on. Like, yeah. it's just like opening people's minds. And those kind of stories for me, like, get me so excited when somebody tries it. And also it changes their life. I have another girl that she wrote to me and she's like, it's a little thing. But like, I went to bed with the menstrual cup the other night. My husband's like, are you on your period? And she's like, yeah, I'm on my period. And he goes, oh, he goes, well, you, you smell different. Like, she's like, do I stink on my period? She's like, he's like, no, no, no. I just know when you're on your period because your scent changes. It just, it you just, it's different. It's not bad. He's like, I, I, you smell different. <laughs> and she was just like, I know that's small, but she was like, it's big to me because she's like, I didn't even know. Like he knew that I was on my period because my scent changed. My hormones, my sweat, everything smells different when I'm on my period. And her husband knew and he was like, something's different. Like, you don't smell like you're on your period. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So even that wow. way for her was a big deal and she loves it period underwear, stories like my old boss with her daughter and just the amount of stories that come out like it's it's so touching to me and I'm I just want to continue helping people and making the brand better. Like right now it's just periods, but I have a plan to make it follow a woman from beginning of her reproductive health to the end cuz we right. get to a point where okay, periods stop, but other things start. So like, I'm starting to think about like, as I'm going older and also going through different phases of life, pregnancy and different things that's happening, women, we're going to go through all these different phases of life. And I kind of want my business to follow a woman from beginning. Mm -hmm. If she wants to have a baby, it's going to follow her through maternity, through postpartum, you know, into menopause, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. 
And I, it helps women feel so supported because we're in the childbearing years for so long that when we get to perimenopause or a lot of the women I work with, when they get to perimenopause, it's, there's a lot of like, almost like they're mourning their old self, you know, they're mourning their, their youth, their, their I ability. I feel like I'm going to do that. I'm already doing that. <laughs> Girl, you're about to have a baby. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, but you know what? This is the last one, okay? I know I said that the last time, but no, this one's the last one. Okay, and well, we'll see what women, happens. You okay. mourn. As yeah. women, yeah. you mourn. When we turn 30, we're like, <laughs> I'm never going to be 20-something again. Like, we mourn every, every, every ever that we go through. We're just like, oh, goodbye. Yeah. We become mothers. Yeah. We're like, oh, goodbye, sin, single laugh. Goodbye, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> you know, like. You know, we get married and we're like, this guy. Bye. Bye. This <laughs> yeah, guy. like every single, you know, so I can't imagine like when I get to, you know, even menopause, it's like, okay, goodbye period and eggs and all that stuff. But now, hello, all of this new stuff. Right. Exactly. The silver lining, mm-hmm. the, the the other side of the coin, right? Exactly. So I like to end the podcast chatting with or or asking you rather like about your favorite crave foods do you get period (laughs) cravings um so during my period you know what I don't have cravings but I crave sugar I crave sugar like I was actually watching your story where you were talking about like your past and how you went through like I was like, this is me AF. It is because I yep. love sugar so much. And I'm like, I don't know why I love it so much, but I have to have sugar. Like mm-hmm. if, if I'm sad, I'm, the same way. I'm grabbing sugar. If I'm upset, happy, sugar, sugar, sugar. Yes. <laughs> but I do yes. um, after I'm done with this pregnancy, because I ain't saying no to myself now <laughs> with mm-hmm. sugar. But I think after, um, since I know this is my last child and my last time pregnant, I want to really, like, after this is done, like, from the time I get the okay at the six weeks, I want to start, like, really trying to become healthy while I still have good news. Like, we don't want to wait till we hear, like, oh, you got to stop eating this because now you're pre-diabetic or you got to stop doing this. You don't want to wait for stuff like that, news like that to come to you to make a change. You want to make the change before. So yeah, I know my sugar craving. I love me some sugar, but I know it's not good for me. (laughs) But yeah. Well, in moderation, right? And it's not something that we want to take away. But when you're ready at six weeks, I got you. I'll I'll help you. (laughs) Pre-postnatal certified too. So that's important. Right. Yes. After pre and post. It's both. very important. Well, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners about Bamlish or yourself or women's health or any inspirational last words? No, I'm just happy to be here. I mean, I'm always yeah. happy to talk to you. I'm always happy to get on the camera. <laughs> Even though yeah. I'm acting up today, but you know. You look great, girl. <laughs> I want to take a picture before we, we get off. Let's do a little <laughs> smile. Cute. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here, Robin. I love chatting with you, especially as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a mother, as a do-it-aller, as someone that's leading the way for women's health. And um, I love your transparency and your honesty. And you're you're my type of girl, like <laughs> putting it all on the table. You know, we're from New York, so it's like, no, bullshit. you know, we got something to say. Long Island. <laughs> we gonna say it, right? So thank you so much for being here and for sharing. And we will have a link uh, below for the listeners to check out Bamblish and get their own set of period underwear. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank mm-hmm. you.